slightly more metres, but based on the stats, they'd normally be expected to lose this game. In terms of individuals, Mitch Garber, uh, unsurprisingly, with one try, 161 metres and three offloads. What a performance for that guy on Dabu. And Danny McGuire, Danny McGuire with three try assists. For the losers, Barretta Farimo, uh, the, the burrito himself, one try, 10 tackle busts, 202 metres and four clean breaks. Josh Griffin ran for 133 metres. Danny Houghton making only 57 tackles and 15 marker tackles. And Dean Hadley chipping in with 46 tackles of his own and 11 marker tackles himself. So uh, a decent performance from them. Star players, I think you've got to look... Um, sort of a few names that, that creep out from the KR side. Certainly uh, the kindly horse, uh, not just for, for the end, for the end, but for his uh, performance throughout the game. Uh, he kept kept betting noticed and, and someone who uh, you know, did well um, overall. I mean, he had he had the challenge of Framo opposite him, didn't he? So that led to a, quite a few missed tackles yeah. uh, down that side. But yeah, there, there was it's, it's not you know that wasn't the only aspect of his game, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he made, got a few meters in as well, so he did did uh, mm. did some good running. Um, the rectum, Joel Tompkins, did have a, a fairly stand up game, uh, as of course did did Mitch Garber, who we mentioned coming off off the bench. But I think he would have been contention to start. Looked very good, just looked solid, and just had that look about him that he, he knew what he was doing and he was in in the right place. And uh, Tommy Lee did quite well coming off the bench. What? Do you not think? <laughs> no, I'm saying what because I've never heard a whole KR fan compliment him before. <laughs> well, that's the I was, I was midway through the for a second. I actually because I was watching with with Heather my girlfriend. She actually notices who's that guy like zipping around. I, was like, oh. I had to look twice. Yeah. I had to go. That's that's Tommy Lee. And she goes, what the one well, one married to Pamela Anderson? Score the winning no. try. A lot of the fans thought he'd scored the winning try, but he was obviously held up short by by Hull FC that's one of the features of the game the, go- the goal line last ditch saving tackles from both sides yeah, yeah and um, I think from, from an FC point of view might, might sort of manage to be well, obviously Danny Houghton did, did have a good game certainly in defence Scott Taylor as always as yeah. you'd expect um, Jez Litton or as my phone kept correcting it Jez Kitten so that's what he's going to mm. be from now on. he certainly made an impression when he came on uh, Mickey Payer did well as well. Uh, he sort of stood out for me. Anyone else that, that caught your eye in particular? I do think for most of the the game, Hull FC um, kind of controlled the tempo and things. And, and I think so... all the, the, the many errors that KR made, certainly in the first half, were, were forced errors rather than, yeah. than just dropping it out. So I thought Snead was, you know, Snide was quite good. Uh with his with his control in, in this sort of game you don't necessarily want the mercurial kind of guy you want someone who's going to control things a bit but I do think they were hampered in attack massively by Washbrook being the man alongside it's, it's an odd choice at this early stage of the season to put that's the sort of thing you you, you put in you know 20 games in isn't it I just think that they obviously decided let's go for something a bit more um, sure, but what you what you're risking then is that the opposition side might find like moments of inspiration, and it gives you that extra and second. And I do think as that well. Danny Maguire did that. Yeah, and it gives you that extra bit of space and that extra second to get at him and get the line. So it just uh, it shuts shuts down. If you see if you see a you know a, a, I don't want to say lumbering because Daniel Smith isn't exactly lumbering, but someone who's is more hesitant and hasn't got that natural ball playing skill, they've got that extra extra you know, two tenths of a second that they need to think about it that then gives the defence that extra time to close them down. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it I definitely think it was um problematic at times. You know, there was there was a few unforced errors that came around Washbrook it felt it felt like. And it, you know, he's a player that I like, but he's not a player that I want to be pl- playing at six in a game that like this. I'd I'd rather have tried Tuma Vavi in there maybe and, and gone with something different in the centres but th- that's the challenge for, for Hull FC to sort out I suppose um, I, I just think both sides like showed great desperation yeah. in the game 
and that meant you know it was a game that was at, was scrappy at times with with plenty of errors plenty of chances not quite being capitalized on by the attack because of the desperation of the defense and, and vice versa as well some 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 chances being created by pure desperation now, and i'm sure you're going to get around to your key highlight moment of this game aren't you which which was the you know the the culmination of that desperation the real pinnacle of that it was it, we've seen it before at that end of that pitch but we've not seen the whole <laughs> kr doing it um when we had the the million pound game um so yeah i mean talk us through how, how you found that last well, well let's say six seconds well let's roll it back a little bit more to say 15 20 i was i was i game. was getting the excuses in i was saying look you know it's it's gonna take them time to gel etc etc this it's unlucky because they have had you know they have had probably more ball it felt like anyway and that, that they could have done something with but it's going to take time and everyone was like oh well don't worry and she was kind of enjoying the fact that I was suffering yeah <laughs> she's going up in my estimation <laughs> <laughs> I mean she was never particularly down let's be honest but um... <laughs> no that's uh, true but this is definitely a, a tick in the positive column <laughs> Not that if Emma ever did that to me, would I let her get away with that so much? I'd be in a massive sulk with her for days. And then no, uh, I was just I was sort of I'd sort of kind of come out of it a bit and, and conceded it in my own head. And then you think, hang on, this this could be. And then you, you sort of and as soon as Kynos got the ball, he just kind of knew it was going to happen at that point. It was like here we go. And then. There was, there was that nervous second around the um, video ref, and I was convinced it was going to get chalked off. Heather was very, I you know, jumped up on the sofa, not quite screwing the place down, but certainly woken up a couple of the neighbours. And I was convinced it was going to get chalked off, and then it went, and she was like, no, it'll be fine, don't worry, they're just going as a precaution. I was like, no, no, I've seen this happen too many times. It's definitely... Definitely and it go. wasn't a winger diving into the corner, no. was it? So it adds that level of question mark when it's maybe a player who's not necessarily not the used on it. to yeah. the diving finish. But um, it was it was close, weren't it? It was tense. So obviously, super elation at that stage for you and all uh, all Hull Kingston Rovers fans. Um, shall we get on to the? Yeah, let's see what you think. So Paul O'Brien started with great start from FC with KR coming back to lead at half time, but what a finish. FC leading by two and with a try. Four seconds to go from KR, yeah. Uh tells everyone who didn't see yeah. it what we've just been talking about in in, in perfect summary. Uh, Mitchell Dart says starting the game with a successful short kickoff, I knew KR were gonna be okay. Twelve nil down and trailing with a few seconds to go isn't the worry for Shenius. Happy Jimmy got the match winner. Great win for the Carinos. Yeah, St. David said, never mind the quality, feel the force of the horse. Force of the horse, that, I love it. We might have an episode <laughs> title, a great finish. Yeah, David, class. Love it. Carsten, Jimmy! Mulhern had a shocking first 10 minutes, but Sneed, Snood, Snide made this up with the second 10. Kale had some real accuracy problems in the first half hour. Yeah, not off. But after that, they're right into the game. The second half was way what you hope to expect from a derby. A close game, changing leads to the end, and then came the German machine. Hashtag Jimmy Watch, hashtag make it trending. <laughs> Tom Andrews, at Tom underscore HKR, gives away where we're going to go here. He said, another season of regular service <laughs> resumed, despite our best two players sitting in the stand. Hull still shy, Tim Sheen still a wizard, and Rovers the kings of the city. Garber and Tompkins stood out and Drinkwater looks the biz. Who's next? Some bottle jobs from across the Pennines. Bring them on. P.S. Good job Paige was at Boys Own in Leeds tonight because I'm going to be unbearable for this whole <laughs> weekend. <laughs> uh, Cutthroat Jake said, what a match. Hull Kingston Rovers look the more creative throughout. No, 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 no. You've misread that. Hull Kingston Rhinos looked the more creative throughout the game and deserved this victory. Hull FC ran the ball in hard but lacked any spark from the halves. 
Uh, Roger the cabin boy. So after the season we had last year, mired as we were amongst the middle eights, performing regularly and with the skill and panache of an under 13s netball team, it was great to see Leeds once again manage to defeat Hull. Boom, boom. FC page. You would think with the team that FC had out, the Dobbins should have walked all over us. Great effort by the boys in black and white in red, as we trust. At Tom HKR, you can have this one, but we all know who re- really rules this city, and it certainly isn't the boys in red and white. Hashtag C O Y H. Rich Langley said, great game for the neutral. Positives for Hull, who still have plenty of the squad to come back in. Rovers still need to gel, but it seems could trouble some sides. Shame about the last set, but Hull have plenty to take out of this, whilst Rovers, who got the two points, arguably didn't have the best game and need to work on their combinations. Mid-table for both sides, I think. Yeah, Heather says, why don't they use the orange ball all the time? That's that's not a bad point, I think, on Televi- on certainly on floodlit games. Because you could really see it, and it was really helped to track the ball. I, Why yeah, not? It 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 was bright and colourful. Um, you know, it felt like we were watching the 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 downer nines or something. But um, but then I saw the snow. <laughs> Joshua's granddad said the best team for large parts of the game but again the absence of an X-Factor player showed our inability to put points on the board during times of dominance solid performance by Massey and good debut by DJ no you can't call Matty Dawson Jones DJ that's what a shit nickname yeah. always in our shadow fuckity fuck 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 six fucking seconds no Kelly no Connor no Westy no Bowden no Tools and we should have had the bastards with bodies to return confident to put them back in their place a little more game smarts was needed do you know what I'm going to have to tick the, oh, uh, yeah, you are. Yeah. the obscene language on this one after my after my rant about Ben Barber and uh, <laughs> some of these Brendan Loftus said good game overall as a Hull fan I was more hoping for a win than expecting one great work from Hull's tri- final try with Sneed running the ball fair play to Rovers scoring in the last seconds but Hull need to start competing for high kicks better the season's going to be tough unless a win comes soon yeah 12 in a row well my mum got two on university challenge and my dad got five um sarah says wrong 17 picked by radford poor on decision on field decisions made too many penalties conceded and a loss that hurts in the final seconds hopefully having the snake back will spark some creativity on thursday that yeah, certainly makes sense. Yeah, fun. that's a good. I, I think with him in that position, that would have been a very different game. Okay, well, the third game of the weekend was also on Friday night, uh, and I was also at this one um, Huddersfield versus Salford, and it finished 34 points to 14 to the Salford Red Devils. 5,387 were there. Liam Moore was the referee. Um, it was 8 2 at half time to Salford, so they really did put that try scoring burst on in, in the second half. Uh, in terms of the stats, Salford made three more errors, gave away two more penalties and had a 3% worse team tackle success rate, but were far better at making ground. 286 more metres at 1.3 metres per carry better average gain. Huddersfield went under 1,000 metres, so to new listeners, that is not a good benchmark if you're aiming for a win. Individually, Josh Jones had 147 metres, Lee Mossop had 140 metres, two of the men in the pack for the Red Devils. Jansen Turgut, who started in the second row but was pushed out into the centres when Junior Sow went off injured. Uh, he got two try assists and 110 metres. Ken Seo had two tries, 106 metres, two clean breaks. Then for the losing Salford side, the only one who hit the uh, hit the stat lines that we require to talk about was Adam Wall. Wow. Um, yeah, surprising inclusion. 111 metres, you know, because of some of the in- the injuries that Huddersfield are already dealing with this season. Um I think some people must have slipped on some ice or something because I don't know how they all managed to be out already. But uh, yeah, Adam Wall actually did quite well. Um, maybe inspired against his former side might have helped too. Yes, Salford, you know, they just attacked and defended with more direction and purpose. Uh, the line speed and intensity had Huddersfield fans screaming for offside throughout the game. But in reality, Liam Moore was holding like a, a bit of a deep 10 and it was the same for both sides. It was just one team was getting off the line quickly and the other one wasn't at all. Um, every time Huddersfield did look like they were going to do something good, and, and each of their props had one or two good runs each in this game that you thought, oh, there's something to build on there. But every time they did something good, inevitably they let themselves down with the next play 
uh, where they made a mistake. The moment that emphasized this the most for me was the game. Where I think we might have been eight eight actually at this point, still in the balance midway through the second half, and. Frawley had started to kind of impose himself a little. He loves the dummy. Um, he created a gap and made some ground, but he got tackled. Scott Grix was there to the dummy half. He ran away from it for some reason, and Adam O'Brien didn't get there in time. So- 